Hello, everybody. Welcome to this Open Networking and Edge Summit presentation about ONAP and ORAN um, and how they're the perfect complement uh, here. My name is Stephen Tyrrell. I'm a senior expert in automation and management at Ericsson and I've um, as prior on the ONAP TSC and the ONAP architecture chair and had various roles in ONAP there. So together with my colleague. Um, Matthias Sinton, I'm an expert in RAN traffic handling and performance at Ericsson and I've been working with Oran for the last two years. We're going to uh, walk you through this presentation for the uh, the next um, 20 uh, 40 minutes or so. So in here, what we what we believe that is, um, and we see that uh, ORAN is defining an open and dis disaggregated RAN, and at the same time, ONAP has been defining a uh, network for automation platforms for multiple domains that includes the RAN. So we believe the question is not why these will meet but how they should meet. OK, so um, we start looking at ORAN uh, then. Uh, ORAN is an industry initiative uh, that works for additional disaggregation of the RAN. Uh, it was announced at Mobile World Congress in 2018, and later in the year, the first working group meetings was held. Um, ORAN has now uh, 23 operator members and more than 100 non-operator companies contributing to the work. Um, if we start to look at, at uh, the ORAN principles and what ORAN would like to achieve, uh, their aim is to create an in industry initiative then, as said, uh, for additional disaggregation of, of the RON. And it works with some principles where the, this openness then should bring uh, service agility and cloud scale economics and intelligence for self-driving networks with AI optimized closed loop automation. Uh, through these principles, um, ORAN works with three main objectives. The first one being disaggregation and open interfaces. Within this objective, ORAN is working on defining multi-vendor interfaces within uh, the distributed unit defined by 3DPP. That means that, that there is another layer of disaggregation introduced in ORAN compared to 3DPP, which which disaggregates the radio functionality and the baseline functionality. But here also ORAN works on, on making the 3 d defined interfaces such as uh, F1 truly multi-vendor. And the initiative should try to make deployment of, of these multi-vendor interfaces as easy as possible. The second objective of ORAN then is automation and optimization. As part of this, uh, ORAN is defining two new control loops and two new uh, radio intelligence controllers. Uh, the first one, the non-real-time RIC, placed in, in the SMO domain, the service and management and orchestration domain, uh, is supposed to um, enable automation uh, as part of the management domain. With the non real time RIC uh, comes an interface to, towards on a, a functionality called A1. The second of the new control loops is relate is internal to the RON. And here Oran introduced the near real time RIC and the E2 interface for for allowing AI ML as a tool when trying to solve the radio resource management problem. The third objective of ORAN is virtualization and open software. Uh, there, there is an aim to cloud, cloudify RAN functionality as far as possible. And uh, in doing that, ORAN is, uh, is creating a hardware and software reference architecture. And it also then uh, looks on how to orchestrate uh, cloud infrastructure for RAN applications. If we look at the uh, structure of ORAN, uh, there are nine different working groups defined. 
and these uh, these very much reflect the objectives of, of Oran. Uh, what we can see is that working group four and five very much uh, relates to the objective number one with further disaggregation, where working group four works on the lower layer script or, or on open front hall interface, and working group five. Uh, refines the standardization and work around the 3DPP defined interfaces such as F1 and X2, for example. For objective number two, optimization and optimization, uh, Oren has two working groups working on, on the new control loops and the controllers associated with that, and also, of course, the interfaces. And if we look at, at working groups six, seven, and eight, uh, those correspond to objective number three uh, with, with virtualization and openness coming. Um, aside these, uh, these working groups, uh, working on specifications and details uh, around the different objectives, we can see that there is an open source uh, focus group uh, in Oran. And this open source focus group uh, is um, a collaboration between the Oran Alliance and Linux Foundation uh, with, with the mission then to support creation of software for the radio access network as, uh, as defined by the Oran architecture. Uh, Within the Oran software community, we can find uh, currently 13 different projects running. And also here, these projects relate very much to, to of course, to the working groups uh, defined by Oran. Uh, to the left here, you can see working groups um, related to work to the radio intelligent controllers that Oran has defined. And to the right, then, uh, you've, you'll see uh, projects related to uh, the, the controller part of the management layer or the service management and orchestration domain. And those are the, the projects then within the Oran open source community, which will be uh, mostly related to the things that we discussed today and, and the uh, things that uh, own up to. If we look at the Oran ar architecture, this also then very much re reflects the objectives of, of, uh, of Oran. Uh, as we can see in this architecture, uh, you can see the diff how, how the different working groups map to this architecture. At the bottom here, we see the split uh, in open frontal interface between the radio and the baseband functionality. And in the middle, we can see the split between the, the, the 3D people defined functionality and the or undefined functionality near real time RIC, which should allow for, for, for greater and simpler or more automated um, optimization of, of RON functions. Um, the near real time RIC should also be designed in such a way that it enables the usage of AI and ML as a tool to solve the, the radio resource management uh, problems. And on top, we can see uh, the service management or orchestration functionality uh, also then uh, prepared to enable using AI and ML for use cases related to more um, management related tasks. Uh, and here we can also then see that there is an, uh, an additional interface standardized by Oran called A1, which we will talk uh, a lot more about uh, later in this presentation. Also, Oran has just recently started to outline uh, the internal structure of this SMO framework. Uh, and inside inside this, uh, we can see that that um, that we can find the non real time RIC, and and the non real time RIC is also as part of the Oran work uh, split into two parts: one framework or platform part, and then one part containing the intelligence. 
that should should do automate solve automation use cases uh, in the wrong domain. Uh, within this split, Oren is then also talking about an R1 API, which will allow the split between platform functionality and the intelligence, the, which uh, Oren call uh, R apps. Thank you, Matthias. It's quite a lot <laughs> going on in there. It's, um, it must be very difficult to keep track of it all. And you've got the new yes. interfaces with the A1 for the policy, the R1 um, for the for the apps, and the traditional O1 for the configuration um, there. But um, with that already, I can see a little bit of how this relates into into ONAP, where it's uh, providing the the automation platform. So it seems a very good fit with the. Um, uh, the SMO concept as such there. I think that's uh, really interesting. Um, so I'm going to say a few words um, uh, about the uh, about ONAP then. As you know, ONAP started in 2017. It's been going for a while, so I assume that uh, there's a lot of people that are very familiar with this already, but in case you're not, um, it could be good to say a few words about this as by way of introduction. So um, it actually stands for open in the area in the sense of open source as well there networking automation platform and it's not really constrained to a particular domain it goes across multi domains so ran could be one of those domains if that's the way you choose to to apply it so there's i think a, a good touch point there it um, um, creates a, a framework for model driven service design and orchestration policy-based control and analytics and what that really is there to enable as well is sort of closed loop automation or control loop automation for virtualization um, and SDN. So this is, can be closed loop assurance. It could be open loop as well um, onto that there. And the way um, this is um, being built and, and, and organized, um, if you're not familiar with uh, the ONAP there, it has this uh, Linux Foundation networking, the LFN board, that's the governing board. They deal with things like uh, membership and they deal with things like money and um, and uh, marketing and so on goes into reporting into there. And they've, they're very prominent, of course, in the uh, ONES type of um, events and organizing those uh, around the world there. Then when it comes down to the actual uh, the technical work, the that's gathered and steered around what they call the TSC. So that's the Technical Steering Committee. And it has a number of subcommittees to support that. Um, dealing with the requirements. So what's the requirements in the next release? So the TSC will be talking about what's what should be the content and what's the timing of the, the next releases and dealing with um, things like, uh, yes, it's okay that this person's, I mean, th th that we have the um, the elections for the different um, uh, subcommittees and, and, and projects and making sure the community is healthy there. Then the subcommittees have got the requirements dealing with what, um, what should be the, the 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 business requirements for the um, different projects uh, for the releases? And that's um, looking at this from a, a cross-cutting perspective because the projects themselves actually produce the code, which is sitting here on on, on the right. These are the, the code-producing artifacts. So once this is for alignment of the content, that will describe the impact in into these. The architecture is looking for the architectural consistency. This is both on someone has a new proposal. I think it should go like this, and this is very much related to how we can um, systemize these these requirements. And of course, this should be a model-driven platform. So modeling is very important. They're also dealing um, with the overall modeling. Um, ONAP has a security subcommittee and they're looking at both security requirements and security mechanisms um, and uh, uh, looking at how we can make this platform them, uh, um, secure. Control Loop is looking at the cross-cutting, uh, cross, uh, um, uh, control uh, the cross-project cross, cross project, uh, control loop um, uh, maturization there. As I said before, you've got the co-producing projects. These are very similar to the um, architect, uh, the the, um, the architecture as such. So you'll see things for uh, service design and creation. You'll see one for policy, um, uh, so on and so forth. There, um, I'm calling two out. One's dedicated to actually facilitating the um, uh, the documentation, and there's also one that brings it together. There's the integration project, so that brings together a consistent release. We have a few coordinators, and their 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 purpose is that's a person. Um, and they can be a point of contact and they can bring things together. So 
Uh, one of them is uh, yeah, the network management area and um, Magnus is working in that. He reaches out and deals, he's a single point of contact, but also reaches out to other communities, um, for example, with ORAN, but also with, with Etsy and, um, and uh, making sure there's a good flow of information there. Um, if we move on to the next page, so <laughs> if we dig one level down, what is it? You can say that ONAP provides an automation platform for managing the services and resources throughout their entire life um, cycle there. And so there's a, um, at a high level, a, um, a design time where you can onboard your resources and, and work with your service definition. When you're happy that, with that, you're pushing it over to the, uh, the runtime there. And that's um, uh, taking feedback from the, the managed environment, which is the network, um, analyzing that, deciding what actions to be taken and uh, pushing uh, changes back down. It also has the ability here to, of course, instantiate or even modify a, 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 a service definition. And then there is exposure, which is a lot of, um, um, about uh, uh, leveraging and interacting with other communities so that you'll find TMF into there, you'll find little bits, of, well, um, MEF has come into, into there also via uh, TMF. And we think about this from a, a number of particular dimensions, a number of particular aspects. So we think one aspect is that it provides a, 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 um, a reference functional architecture. So we'll see, a, we'll, we'll introduce that on the next slide here, but you, you gives expectations of the type of function, uh, the functionality and architecture that could um, compromise a, uh, that could make up a, a, an automation platform. When it has that architecture, there's a number of um, components, so it provides um, uh, definitions for these reference components as, as well. And so far, this is rather independent of the actual source code, but of course it is a uh, reference source code as well. Um, and you can take that piece by piece, or you can take that as the whole um, the, uh, environment and, and, and use that there. It also um, comes with some requirements on the VNFs and uh, PNFs and CNFs in order to say, hey, Here's what's necessary. Here's what's recommended if you want to uh, be managed by uh, this network automation platform there. So it's looking for a bit of industry uh, um, alignment around uh, that way there. What you can see here is the uh, the most recent uh, architecture from uh, um, from ONAP. I won't go into sort of I won't go into some all the details. I'll just um, call out a, a couple of points. Here's the service design um, and creation part here. Actually, you have the design time, you have the overall runtime that was mentioned before. And here as we get down, we'll see actually a part for actually watching and managing ONAP here. So this is making sure that the ONAP components are uh, alive and can be instantiated and healthy there. What you see here is the service design and creation. There's a message bus for communication here. There's the data collection, analytics and events for this for receiving and running for the um, uh, receiving events, analyzing that, and actually an, an environment for different applications to be able to run on here. Adaption towards uh, different cloud environments. We have this SDN control and application control, and now these are interfaces as down, down southbound towards the actual applications and understands the, the applications as well. And you could see then, okay, um, Matthias was talking about the A1 interface, and that seems a good fit for what would go on in a, a controller here. Then we have the, the, the virtual function controller, and this deals with um, uh, some of the, the software lifecycle management, has NFEO, VNF, um, M, um capabilities. We have some infantry, service orchestration policy, and uh, actually managing the control loop. In relation to the controllers, they have this common controller SDK, um, and that's a, a, a set of libraries and utilities for actually D defining what you want on these uh, these controllers, so you don't have to be limited by these actual uh, controller definitions. You've got other capabilities inside the CCSDK. This also applies for model utilities and the Tosca parser there as well. There's some common capabilities that are shared between these. Uh, then, of course, you've got the uh, external interfacing uh, for both the human perspective and the external APIs. I said this also has component definition. So here's just one example of a component definition. There's a definition for all of this. And this happens to be um, data collection analytics and events, where you can see there's the southbound connections to the managed elements and also the services that are um, offered and, and consumed. So you can see, for example, how it connects onto SO, how it deals, it connects to, to CLAMP, which is closed loop automation and policy. 
um, so on and so forth there. There is a, a, a description of this for each and every every component there. Um, if we move along, um, one important aspect I think of ONAP is also the uh, industry alignment. And it's a, a bit of a meeting point there. And here we see actually see that both for ONAP and also for, for ORAN. We, um, if ORAN is, uh, has the service management and orchestration that's focusing on the management of the RAN, and ONAP is an automation platform that can cover different domains that includes the RAN, it's very natural that this can actually um, form an ecosystem, and, and ONAP could be one realization, maybe there's others, but one realization of the platform for the SMO. But together, <coughs> there's a broader community than that. Both uh, ONAP, of course, um, can have a look at the 3GPP management um, uh, interfaces. And um, ORAN is, uh, as Matthias was mentioning, has a, obviously a great interaction with what is happening at 3GPP, both uh, the network function side, but also the, the management interfaces side. Um, this, uh, the TM Forum expose, uh, has some capabilities for uh, inventory management, service management, and that uh, also um, relates to these scopes. Uh, since they uh, both ONAP and ORAN deal with the virtual software as well, it's very um, uh, natural that there's a part of the ecosystem dealing with Etsy Mano and ZSM, Zero Start Service Management, is also dealing with automation and there's a good interaction um, between ONAP and ZSM. Uh, and I think there's even presentations about this in the recent layer one, two, three, but there's, there's good um, uh, interactions there. And that will, of course, by, by, by uh, extension, uh, take into account some of the, uh, the ORAN aspects as one domain. Um, of course, if you talk, think about this from a connectivity perspective, um, both the IETF, MEF and the broad, uh, BBF um, have a, a, an interaction relationship here from the, uh, the, the, the transport relation. And since this is not just specification, since this is realization, the, the, the CNCF is um, a, uh, another important uh, a, a relationship there as well. Um, and of course, this is interactions and, and, and this is not always done uh, through the, the, the formal means. Um, a lot has been done, for example, um, as with uh, the people that we have working together, uh, both within the community um, and with, uh, between the community. So, for example, with the Etsy Mano work, I, um, the work we've been doing about the Etsy alignment in, in ONAP, we've had presentations to the Etsy I, ISG about that. And there's uh, the similar collaborations and presentations in, in between the um, ONAP and, and the ORAN there. Okay. So, Matthias, you'll take us through some of the um, ONAP and ORAN uh, yes. alignment examples here, I think. Yes, I will. Looking forward to that. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, as you pointed out, uh, Stephen, uh, the scope of ORAN is very, very big. Uh, but we thought, I mean, to, to, to exemplify uh, this uh, alignment, we'll, we'll touch upon two specific things where, where the scope of ORAN and ORAN meet. And, uh, um, Sorry, Matthias, I've lost your voice. Sorry, something happened there with the mute button. I'm terribly sorry. Uh, but um, um, I don't know where I was lost. The start of the page, I think we can go back to. The start of the page, OK. Yes, uh, so um, one specific example of uh, where the scope of ONAP and, and uh, ORAN meets uh, is then, uh, as pointed out earlier, the A1 interface. And, and to understand the A1 interface, you need to understand the, the idea behind the non-real-time RIC. And the non-real-time RIC is being specified by ORAN to add the capability to change the behavior of uh, 
run based on analytics data and business policies on a per UE basis and on a time scale that is down to several seconds. Uh, this should also be done then so that that the non real time rig is prepared for utilizing AI and ML as a tool to solve specific use cases. Uh, with this in mind, then uh, the A1 interface is uh, specified in ORAN uh, in addition to the ordinary configuration inf interface O1. And, and this A1 interface then has the capability to issue policies for individual UEs um, down to the RON so that you can affect the RON behavior for individual users. And, and this is something that, that will be useful in, in cases where the default, when, when you understand from a management point of view that the default con configuration is not working uh, for a particular user. Uh, a good example of this is, is that, that with additional information of how, how fast the UE is moving, for example, you can trim mobility or set policies for mobility for the fast moving UEs in an area to avoid ping pong effects uh, or similar in, in ROM. But A1 also adds the capability to provide enrichment information to the ROM functionality uh, from the management layer. So if you have analytics functionality in the management layer that, that gives an insight which would be valuable for the ROM function to work, uh, this, this uh, information can over the A1 interface be passed down to the ROM functionality as enrichment information. So that is kind of the overall objective of, of the non-real-time RIC and, and the addition of the A1 interface. Okay, so, um, so for realizing this has been some work um, on the converged A1 adapter. Previously, there was a little bit of work actually done in um, uh, in both in uh, the TSC inside of um, ORAN, and and also there was a um, an initiative started actually in ONAP as well. And now they've come together to put this together and created what's a, sort of a converged A1 uh, adapter. And this is done inside the, the common, common controller SDK to make the actual A1 adapter and then realized um, as part of the SDNC um, project and, and therefore part of the SDNC artifact there. Um, this it will then be upstreamed actually to the ORAN um, OSC for um, integration. And this is described as actually I mentioned before there was a requirement subcommittee. There is a requirement uh, that's the ONAP slash 3GPP and ORAN alignment A1 extensions. Uh, this is uh, one example. There are a few others, but this is one example I think was worth highlighting and related to the, the A1 interface. Okay, um, the other specific um, defined by by ORAN is then the split between the the platform uh, some platform functionality and and our apps uh, within the non real time rig in in Oran and and for this um, Oran is working on an R1 API that should allow for separate lifecycle management of the different automation intelligence which Oran call our apps and a, a platform functionality. Uh, and this then decouples uh, the automation intel intelligence uh, that addresses different kind of automation use cases from, from the platform functionality and will, will is supposed to enable a, a simpler and more uh, flexible handling of or a more flexible way to address different use cases with different kind of intelligence. Thanks, uh, Matthias. So this, this R1 seems to be a very interesting interface. So I guess it needs access to um, uh, data from the network and also be able to um, drive what you were mentioning before, describing before the, the A1 interface there. And yes. And to to achieve that, what we, we see is that there's a number of interfaces uh, provided by ONAP components, and I described them uh, uh, the examples of those those before. And what we see is there there 
um, there can be a an interaction and an, a and I think a sort of a subset of these could be quite valuable on the R1 interface. So we see, um, and also thinking about from the R1 interface, there could be needs that haven't been thought of today. So we see that there's a um, there will be a, an influence between um, the between O brand defining the R1 interface and a, a bit of a selection or adjustments to some of the the own app components interface. So this is a uh, a cooperation that we uh, uh, an ecosystem in a, in a way that we see that can be um, a very valuable and starting up now. OK, um, now the, um, the if we move on to the concluding phase now, the summary, what we've been explaining is that ORAN is creating an open and disaggregated RAN, and that includes the service management and orchestration um, layer there. We see that ONAP provides a network automation platform and we see that there's a great opportunity for industry alignment here, um, and we have, um, and we see that's already started. We provide a few examples of that. So um, with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention or virtual attention today, and I hope this was uh, an enjoyable presentation from us, and there was something in it for you. Yes, thank you very much for listening. All right, we have about four minutes for live Q&A with our speakers. Please feel free to submit your questions via the chat or Q&A panel, and we will have our speakers answer them. Okay, can you, um, can I be heard? This is Stephen. Yes, we can hear you. Great, thank you. I tried to answer some during the chat, some of the questions that came up, thank you for that. Um, one was, why is ORAN linked so closely to ONAP? What about OSM and other related solutions um, uh, from big vendors like Nokia and Ericsson and, um, and so on there? And uh, what I want to say there is ORAN has a specification part and that's independent of any realization. And then it has an open source reference sort of um, realization work that they're starting up and working on. And we think ONAP is one um, possible reference platform for that. Uh, I'm not saying there can't be others, and there's some activities that's ongoing, like the A1 interface. Um, as, as an example there, and there could be others, I think there was also a question from, say, uh, a follow-up question related to that as well, is what about um, the front hall and the back hall? And there's a few architectural options there, to my understanding. And of course, ONAP has you know, transport orchestration capabilities. I know that at and has been driving that in for some um, parts as well. And, that could be a possibility. I don't think it's at the, the top of the uh, discussion tree at the moment, but it certainly could be a possibility going forward as well. The, uh, the first okay, yeah. is, I don't know, maybe you have yeah. a better view. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, a slightly better view, uh, I would say, because um, as I guess we pointed out in the presentation, uh, on the scope of ORAN is, is uh, very, very big. And uh, I must admit that, that uh, the lower layers here is, is not my my expertise perhaps, but, but uh, just to point out that uh, there are open source projects in, in ORAN related to development of the OGU, and I guess it, it would be within those open source projects where, where the Mac scheduler would be implemented. Okay, um, <laughs> I'll also note that um, not a question, but a plug from our, our colleague uh, John Keeney, who actually will be demonstrating some of the uh, ONAP A1 policy demos that has, has, has been done, which is actually a representative of the work that we have in slides. He has a link to that there. So thanks for that, um, John. Uh, there were some questions about the um, uh, the slides and the uh, the quality of the, the format, uh, the quality of the, the text here. Just the slides will be uploaded in the process to, to look better. Was there anything else that people wanted to raise? Well, I guess then we're at the end of our, uh, oh, was there one coming in? Let me just notice. Okay, what about the uh, relation to, to MEF? Um, so, 
the relation to MEF, of course, MEF has the um, legato and, and so on in general that relates into in, into ONAP, and it also brings in the um, the uh, the TM forum uh, APIs there. And when it comes to the what what the R1 interface could be, um, uh, that w will um, be sort of influenced by the ONAP platform there. Um, the part of that discussion, I think, could actually include uh, what's the relationship towards the uh, the TMF APIs. But um, it's very early, very premature to say exactly what um, Oran will do on on that one. But um, that may come into into that um, uh, play. I don't know if there's anything else specific in Oran related to to, to MEF other than other than uh, that at the moment. That answers the question, Charles. Or oh, addresses it, maybe not answers it. <laughs> All right, I think we have time for one more question. It looks like it came through via the chat. Okay, thank you. Okay, so you're asking really about the A1, okay. The uh, the relationship about the A1 policy um, control and what happens with the 5QI. It's, a, it's an excellent question and uh, something that can cause lots of debate. The way we see it, um, and this is, uh, uh, I can't speak for ORAN, I can't speak for ONAP, I can only speak for the way we see this from Ericsson's point of view, is that um, the RAN will be respecting the five QIs that come from, the, the, the priority given by the five QIs coming from the core network, that's the business driven sort of requirement there. But there are certain situations where you need to actually work at assuring the actual experience or doing slight optimizations while still respecting what comes from the core network. And that's where they, uh, the, the, the cause nudging in the A1 could also come. There are other cases that are independent of that, for example, policies for setting the frequencies for a, a fast using, fast moving user saying, don't go to um, um, micro, say, or macro. Those are also um, part of these cases. But it's a, it's a very good um, conversation, that one, George. All but right. Well, thank you to our. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. I just wanted to let everybody know that we did upload the PDF of the slides into the handout section. So you should see a handouts icon underneath your video panel where you can locate that PDF. And I think that concludes our time today. So thank you everybody for joining and please feel free to keep the conversation going using the Slack channel provided in the chat.